Hey everyone. Today I'll be doing an onboarding walkthrough for the CoPlay AI assistant that lives inside Unity. So the first thing after installing CoPlay that you'll want to do is you want to actually open the CoPlay window. So you can open this CoPlay tab at the top and then toggle window, or you can hit Command G or Control G depending on what platform you're on. But I'll click on that and this will open the CoPlay window. So uh, I like to have it docked inside my Unity, just so it's always in one place and it doesn't disappear behind other windows. So I, you can dock it anywhere you want or you can keep it floating, depending on what your preference is. Okay, so this is the CoPlay window and uh, the, the default settings that you start with are what we typically recommend. So this will change over time, but for now it is normal mode with Cloud4 Sonnet as the, the, the mode and the default model to use. And um, the first thing you can do to get started is just ask anything inside this text box to the model. So an example could be like, uh, what can you do? And then we can see actually what the model responds with here, but typically it should tell you, give you a rough overview of what it can do. So here's, it'll start listing all the different things it can do. Okay, so that's the main stuff you need to know. Now I'll dive deeper into uh, the various sort of niche -er and more specific things that would help you get along in like more intermediate to advanced use cases. Okay, so everything we see over here, at the top here we have the new chat button. So if you open this, this will start a new fresh chat. That's quite useful when you want to preserve context. So you can also see the amount of context that's being used down here on the right. And typically you don't, you want to keep this to a minimum. The less, uh, the smaller context the model has to work with, the more accurate the results will be. However, there are cases where, uh, for example, you have something that the model has sort of learned about the project already inside one long chat thread. And then typically it would make sense to um, just keep doing that same relevant task in that long chat thread. Now, another thing that's re related to that is the chat history. So over here, you can see all the different chats I've had in the past. And again, this is sort of useful if you want to go back to something where the model was really good at understanding what's happening for that specific task, and you want to continue down that thread. So you can open that up. Uh, let me open up this one. And here you can see all the messages and screenshots that the interactions I had with the model. And from here, you can continue to ask it anything else. And you can see here it used 44% of the, of the context, and this whole thread cost me $7. Okay, so that's the history. Then the second thing, let me just open this here to clear it out. Um, second thing you wanna take note of is the settings. So your device ID is just used for debugging mainly. You can also actually add your own Anthropic API key. So what this will do is it'll use your Anthropic API key instead of, um, instead of you having to pay Coplay to use uh, AI, you can just pay Anthropic directly and use Coplay for free. A um, couple of other things here, highlight changes. This will, add, if you have this checked, it'll actually uh, zoom in to different parts of the Unity editor to um, show you the changes the AI is making as it goes along. This is quite useful if you want to understand better what the model is doing and, and learn Unity as you go along. So you can see where you need to make the changes in the future. Hierarchy autocomplete is a pretty cool feature where if you make changes in the hierarchy here, for example, you might want to rename something, um, then there will be pop-up suggestions for autocompleting those tasks in bulk. Self-improvement um, is if you enable this, basically after each chat thread, uh, Coplay will review the thread and then try to come up with some rules that will make it better in the future. So here you can see one example of that. Um, so it basically says, when asked to analyze the Unity scene, prioritize using scene analysis tools. Um, and if you accept this, it will get added to, I'll accept that just to show you, it'll get added to your um, custom Coplay rules. Now, this is another important thing. Um, we see quite a lot of people use this for specific instructions that they want to have with their project. So let's say, for example, you, want, you always want to use an MVC uh, approach. You can add that here, always use uh, MVC approach when creating code, something like that. And then the model will always use that rule when uh, doing changes in the future. 
I'll just save that. Cool. So then enable screenshots. This tool is one of the visual feedback tools that Copa has. So it'll take screenshots at runtime or in edit time um, to verify that what it's doing in the scene is actually relevant. And then enable checkpoints. This is also a pretty cool nifty feature where uh, you have the ability to undo some of the changes that the AI is doing. So you'll, you'll be familiar with this if you've used cursor or Klein a lot. Um, I can show an example of this by going to one of the older threads. Uh, not this one, clearly. Try this one. Yeah, so here you can see some checkpoints. So for example, uh, before making other changes here, uh, we've restored we've stored a checkpoint here. So if you click this button, it'll restore the project to that state. I'm not going to do it now because this project has had some other changes since the thread. But yeah, essentially you can restore a checkpoint to undo all the changes the model did after that checkpoint. Okay, and then um, max requests. This you can set depending on what your needs are. I typically send it to the highest, 99 which allows the model to do 99 tasks without me sending a message. Uh, this does mean that it can use more credits in a single go and also do sort of more uncontrolled tasks. Uh, the default here is 20, but sort of fill it out and go with what you feel. And then the last more complex one uh, for very advanced use is MCP servers. So this one is currently empty, but um, you can add any other MCP servers, for example, Blender or AWS, Superbase, and Coplay will then go and use those MCPs to complete your, your project or task. Uh, feel free to hop on our Discord to ask more about this. There's a couple of users and ourselves that use different tools inside here. Cool, so that's the settings. Um, okay, so another thing that's important here is adding attachments to your messages. So one thing you can do is just drag and drop specific stuff uh, into your context. So in this example, let me find a script I can add here. Um, so I'll drag and drop this in here and you can see it being attached to context. You can also do it manually by uh, finding the file in your folder system. And then we can ask a question about this. So I'll ask, uh, is this script relevant to my current scene? Cool. And this isn't always needed. The You can also uh, for example, the model will find its own context if it needs to, if it's not provided. But this helps you get to the answer slightly quicker by specifying to the model what context you've added. Another thing you can do for adding context is you can use the add symbol. Uh, I can't do it now because I'm waiting for the model to respond here, but that's the other option. And another thing you can see here is this stop thinking button. And this will essentially stop the model from uh, just its current process, and then you can continue if you see it going down the wrong track. While it's thinking there, I'll carry on to explain some of the other things. So uh, the different modes here is, um, yeah, these also change frequently. The, the main and best one is normal mode. So this will be the fastest and most reliable. Step by step is if you want to force the model to sort of think between each step. So before for example, creating the next script or creating the next object or setting some property, you want it to see the result after each step. So it's it's a bit slower, but it's more thorough. One, such, one shot scene gen is um, a mode in which you can describe some scene and the model will create that scene in uh, sort of a fast, fast one shot mode. Um, you can achieve the same in normal mode, but it will take a bit longer. Uh, and then there's experimental mode, which is um, at the moment, it is an upgrade of normal mode that does tasks in batch mode. So it should be even faster, but thus far it's unclear whether or not it's more accurate than normal mode. So that's why we still have it in experimental as we fine tune it. And then pipeline recording. This is actually a pretty cool mode where um, you, can, you can record all the different actions you do inside Coplay, or sorry, inside Unity. Coplay will record those for you, and then later on you can replay them um, using AI and natural language. So for example, you might be doing live offs by adding new weapons one week to your game, and then the next week you can say, okay, cool, redo this process, but with these other two assets that I've added to my, my project. And then finally, orchestrator mode 
is um, in this mode. Actually, let me stop this and just show you that mode. So in our orchestrator mode, we have this Copilot plan file that's inside your, uh, this file here, that's inside your assets folder. And whatever text you have written there, Copilot will go and read that and turn it into tasks or execute them as tasks and then update that file as it makes progress. So that's quite useful if you're, if you have some design file and you want to go straight from the design file into some MVP. Uh, so it's quite useful for automating large tasks. Let me go back to normal mode here and just double check that we are doing okay. I'll use a faster, cheaper model and ask it what's in the scene. Let's see if that works. Uh, I see there's something wrong here with images. Let me stop this. It's trying to add a bunch of images to our... Let me restart Coplay quickly. So that's another important thing. If Coplay ends up in a weird state for you, just uh, restart the window and that should refresh all the different um, attachments, for example, that might be added. Let's try that again um, with this fast model. What's in the scene? Cool, there we go. That makes more sense. And then let's redo that demo. So if I add, uh, let me add it, go to scripts again and rocket projectile. Yeah, I can use that one. So if I attach the script, um, does this script have any relevance to a scene? And let's use a slightly smarter model. So Claude Sonnet. I'll go through the models in a second. But now I've attached this context. So the model knows I'm referring to this script. Um, and I'll basically go through the current scene to figure out uh, to figure out if this script is part of the scene or relevant to it at all. So it's not used in the scene, different context, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, seems pretty accurate. Okay, then one other thing. Let me remove the, the attachment there. I'll actually just start a new thread. Go back to this fast model and I'll turn off this auto proof just to show you what I mean here, but um, I've had it on all the time now, but if we want to create things and you want to control it, um, so let's say I want to create four cubes and four random scripts and attach them to each cube. Okay, so I'm running this model. I've got auto proof turned off, so now instead of executing them automatically, I can see the actions before executing them. So I can say, okay, cool. I want to execute this one. I said created that cube, but I don't want to execute this one, so I'll cancel it. And I do want to execute this one and this one. Okay, so it basically allows you to decide what you want to execute. Another cool thing you can do is here we've created the four scripts and they do something random, but now I'll say, uh, I can give the model feedback before, before actually executing those tasks. So uh, an example might be instead of complete randomness, make each script move the cube in some unique way. Okay, so now you can see here that I've given that feedback. It adds the feedback here instead of complete randomness to each of the, the function calls. And now what it's done is it's going to redo a lot of those functions and um, change the script. So you can see here, uh, move script, move script, two, three. Okay, this isn't the smartest model, but that's one of the examples. And I can then just run all to execute all of that in one single go. Okay, so that is the auto approve. I'll stop doing that for now. Um, but let's carry on to the next part. So next and final part here is the model selection. So again, the default model that we've selected is Claude for Sonnet. It's the best one uh, for most tasks. Another good runner up is GPT-5 and Gemini 2.5 Pro. These are also more affordable at, at about the third of the cost of Claude for Sonnet. The very best uh, model is um, 4.0 Opus, but this model is very expensive. It's about 10 or five or 10 times the price of Claude for Sonnet. Um, so only use this if you really want to get something done or if uh, 
the money is not an issue to you and you want to make sure you get the right answer. Then all the other models here are, um, let's say, fair game. Uh, some of them, is, for example, this one is free, but it does have rate limit, like severe rate limits, so it's hard to get something done um, just with that one. But yeah, as I mentioned before, you can always add your Anthropic key here um, to run everything here at complete cost. And for now, Coplay is also charging this at cost, so uh, everything you use here is just directly sent to the LM providers. Okay, and that was the quick overview of Coplay. There's a bunch of tools that Coplay exposes. Um, it's hard for me to go over all of them, but yeah, if if you ever have a question about anything, the best place to go is just to ask the model itself, like why did you do this or why use this tool, um, for example, and the model will tell you. And that's a wrap. Thank you everyone for tuning in and I hope you have a good time with Coplay. Thank you.